If you're looking for highly customizable priest weak cores for Wrath of the Lich King Classic, well, you're watching the right video. I'll be showing you how to install and properly customize them to your liking. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Alright, so let's begin with the installation. Before we do anything, I recommend that you delete the previous version of the weak cores that you were using. This will ensure that we get a clean new install which will limit the risk of possible issues. You'll only have to do this process once, since in the future, you'll simply have to update them as needed. Let's head over to Luxthose.com in order to copy the import code. The link is provided in the description down below. Simply scroll down on the page, click the button to copy the code, and head back to World of Warcraft. Once you're in-game, make sure to open up the Weak Horrors panel by typing slash WA in the chat window. Click Import, paste the code, and you're done. One thing to keep in mind is that the name of the actual groups are very important. You need to make sure you do not rename any of them. Also, make sure you do not have any duplicates. If you have multiple copies of the same weak cores, the added number to the group name will cause you some issues. The last thing on our list before we move on to the customization is to make sure we activate the action bar cooldown number in the interface options. Without this, if you're using the default UI, you simply won't see any number on your auras. If you want to change the look and behavior of those numbers, you can use an add-on like OmniCC or something more complex like LVUI. It is important to notice that both these add-ons will replace the default number. So make sure you don't have both options active at the same time, or you'll be seeing some overlaps. Alright, so we're going to move on to the customization, and we're going to start with the placement and sizing. Because I'm using a resolution of 1440p and a UI render scale of 100%, you might be seeing something different on your end. The weak cores might be bigger or smaller, and I'm going to show you how to change that. So first of all, open the weak aura panel slash WA. You're going to click on Luxthos Priest, the main group right here. And then you're going to click on the group tab right here. You're going to first see the group scale. You're going to be able to size that down or up to your liking. You can also change the X offset. So if you don't want it to be centered, you want it to be a little bit more left or right. That is a possibility and also the Y offset. If you want to move it down or up, you're going to be able to do that as well. So if you want to, if you want things to fit a little bit better your UI, if you want uh, it to fit better your resolution and your scaling, you're going to be able to do just that. All right, so we're now going to move on to the groups, their utility, and how to organize the information within them. So a lot of things have changed since previous iteration, and I kind of want to go over all the existing group. What do they do? What are they all about? And what you can do with them and how to customize them. So uh, if, you've, if you've used my weak ores uh, from Burning Crusade, Shadowland, Battle for Azeroth, things used to be a lot different. So all the icons were more static. They all had a, you know, static positioning, and it was quite complicated to move things, especially if you had like different keybinds and it didn't really match the order. It was a little bit complicated. So we've moved on to a brand new design that is a lot more free flowing and allows you to uh, to just customize everything to your liking and, and just and just look better in general. So I'm going to go over the groups real quick and we're going to we're going to show you what, what I'm talking about here. So we're going to start off with the core group. And uh, as you can see, there's something going on here. So there is eight icon at the top here that are quite large. This is what I call the main bar, the main uh, the main bar here on the core group. And then you have the secondary bar here at the bottom. This is going to be the overflow. So after the eighth icon here, everything else after is going to get pushed automatically to the bottom. This means you have full control over this group. Right, So it contains all of your rotational ability, all of your cooldowns and everything is in here, and then you can change the order of everything. If you want Mind Blast to show up maybe after your, your, your dots right here, well, you can do that. If it lines up better with your action bar here at the bottom, you're, you're free to do that. 
You could also move it to the bottom section if you want to. Uh, we're not going to do that just now. So you could uh, you could move it down here at the bottom, or you could move maybe Shadow Fiend up here and maybe lower something else down there if it didn't fit uh, the the type of information that you're looking for, pretty much. So you got full customization on that here. So that's going to be it for the core group. Quite simple, but very powerful. This is going to contain all of your major stuff, and it's going to anchor everything else around it. So quite important right here. We're going to move on to the dynamic effects here. So the dynamic effects and spell is what I call the dynamic section here at the top. So it rests on top of the core group right here in the middle. Uh, the dynamic effects is going to be sitting on the left side here. It's going to start from here and grow uh, towards the middle, towards the right. And it's going to contain mostly procs, buff, debuff, tier set, all of that good stuff. It's all going to show in here. And all of the icons are going to be also following uh, the order. So that means that if something, maybe you would like Shadow Weaving to, to appear later when some other things are also showing up, feel free to do that. You can customize the order fully to fit your need. And uh, you're also going to be able to remove some of them. So if things get a little bit too crowded, um, you're picking a lot of talents that have a lot of passive ability. You have a tier bonus. You have all of those things. And it starts to generate a lot of icons. Well, if there's anything in here that you don't necessarily need to see, well, feel free to simply click it, go to the load section, and click never. This is going to make it quite uh, quite simple. It's simply going to make it never load again. And uh, so you're going to be able to remove uh, some of the icons here if things is getting a little bit too crowded. So again, you can change the order and all of that good stuff. We're going to move on to the dynamic spells here. Dynamic spells is a little bit different. So this is where I put a lot of abilities that, depending on which spec you are, might not be as important to you. So you might still want to track these for this, these different spec, but they're not quite as important to have in the main rotation at all time. So they're simply going to sit on top here of this group, and they're only going to show up if they're present. So in the case of uh, damage over time ability, they're only going to show up if they're on your target. And in the case of a cooldown ability, uh, they're only going to show up when they're on cooldown, right? So, for example, um, if you would like to modify this, if you would like to modify this behavior. So, let's let's look at what it looks like. So, we're going to go into here. We're going to be looking for the Prayer of Mending ability. We're going to put it right there. And uh, we're going to have to go out here a second. If we cast this ability, you can see that the ability right here goes on cooldown, and as soon as it clocks out, it's simply going to disappear, letting you know that the ability is available. If you want to change that behavior, if you would like that ability to be part of your core, you can technically do that. All you got to do is move it down here into the core group, and then you got to change the trigger. So there's going to be uh, the main trigger number one here is going to be the one you're going to need to change. So this one is going to be the cooldown for Prayer of Mending. And instead of showing on cooldown, simply modify this to always. There we go. So Prayer of Mending now shows into the main core, and you're going to be able to see it at all time. We're going to revert this change. We're going to go back to on cooldown, and we're going to move it back into uh, right here. There we go. So we're going to leave that right there. But you're going to be able to fully customize this if you want things to look a little bit different. We're not going to move on to left and right side here. So these two groups right now don't do anything, and they're empty. So you might want to know, what are they What are, what are they there for? Uh, it's quite simple. So from one of my previous design back in Shadowland and even in Battle for Azeroth, uh, I used to uh, separate some abilities and some information on the left side and right side. So on the right side, you would usually have your Silence, your Interrupt, and your CC. And then on the other side here, on the left side, you would have your Offensive and, and your all your offensive cooldown and abilities on here. So if you want to go back to that design, well, you're free to do so. So it's very, very, very straightforward. Let's say that we take Shadow Fiend, for example, which um, you would like to put it on the left side here to have a better tracking of it. You can simply drag it and drop it onto the left group right here. We're going to close this and we're going to do a quick slash reload. And voila, you now have Shadow Fiend that is sitting right here instead of being part of the primary group. And that information is going to be displayed on the side if that's something that you really want to track. So we're going to go ahead and open this and we're going to reset the position. So we're going to bring this back down over here. There we go. 
So that's now back to normal. So that's going to be that's going to be the utility of these. Uh, they're simply here to allow you more customization when it comes to placement. So use them as needed. We already went over the course, so we're going to move past that. We're going to go to the maintenance. So maintenance is quite interesting. It sits at the bottom, below the secondary bar here. It sits all the way at the bottom down there. And this is going to be tracking all of your uh, maintenance buff, pretty much. So are you in shadow form? Um, do you have Empiric uh, Embrace active? All your buff and all that good stuff. And you're going to be later on, uh, I'm going to show you how, how to customize their display. So you can decide to show them maybe if they're applied, if they're missing or all the time, you're going to be able to fully customize that. So this is going to be sitting right here at the bottom and you can fully customize also the order if you want to. Uh, now we're going to talk about the resources. So the resources for the priests, again, sit straight in the middle here between the primary and the secondary icons for the core. So it sits right into the middle. And as you can see, we have access to an health bar, a mana bar, and the weakened soul debuff tracker. So health bar is new. We didn't have that in any of the previous version of the weak ores. And it's quite simple. By default, I disable it pretty much for every class, uh, just to keep the design a little bit similar to previous iteration. But if you want to, simply go into the load tab after clicking the health bar, uncheck never, and you now have your own health bar. I recommend that you always do a quick slash reload after modifying any everything, uh, anything pretty much. And uh, there we go. So the health bar is showing up. We're going to go ahead and revert that change real quick. We're going to go back, click never. There we go. So that's now going to be back to uh, the default state. You're going to have the meta bar, which is pretty straightforward for your priest, and the weakened soul. So you're going to be able to customize the color of these things. And also you can change the positioning if you want your meta bar to show over the health bar. You can do that or with the little arrows over here. Quite simple. So that's going to be it. So anytime, anytime you modify anything here, I, I always recommend to close the weak ore, look, and then do a quick reload just to make sure everything is in order. But with this, uh, with this information, you're now going to be better equipped uh, for the custom options section of the video. And uh, we'll be able to customize everything exactly how you want to. All right, so we're now going to move on to the custom options for the Priest Weak Ores. So this is going to be a pretty big segment, but it should be pretty fun. This will allow you to pretty much style and customize the Weak Ores to your liking, to do whatever you want, whatever design you feel like achieving. So that's going to be pretty awesome. We're going to click on the Luxthos Priest group right here, and then we're going to click into the Custom tab right here. You're going to get a full list of all the things you can modify on the weak ores and style for yourself. So that's gonna be pretty awesome and we're gonna go through every single one of them. But before we do that, I just wanna show you the location of those things, uh, where they're situated, uh, because right now this is grouping up only the options. There's three locations primarily. There's gonna be the general option uh, aura right here, which is gonna contain all of the general styling. So this is something that can be applied to other class and shared very easily because it's very global in general, right? So it, it can be applied to pretty much any other class. It's not it's nothing class related here. The class options, on the other hand, are a little bit more class related. So it's going to contain like uh, additional resources depending on your spec. So for a priest, it's going to be the weakened uh, soul bar. You're going to have your mana, your health bar. So if you if you want to customize those based on your uh, class, this is going to be quite nice here. And then we have the maintenance group at the bottom. Uh, you can go here into the custom options and you're going to be able to customize all the behavior of the maintenance uh, buff and everything that you have to maintain. So you're going to be able to change that. But we're going to cover that in a little bit uh, later section of the video. So they're all everywhere and it's it can be overwhelming. But the easy aspect is you just have to click the main group, right? So you just click this group for the priest. Go into custom option, and now they're all grouped up under a single window here, which is going to make it very easy and straightforward for us to go through them, modify them, have fun with them, and create a brand new design, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to explain every single one of these to you, and at the same time, we'll build a brand new design from scratch. Why not? Let's have fun. The first one here is going to be the global style, which is, my opinion, uh, one of the cool ones. So you get access to the border here, which is really, really nice. So you can apply a border to every single icon in your weak ores. Uh, it also applies it to the bars, the icon. Everything in here is getting styled all at once. Uh, so for our new design, let's put this at two right here for fun. You can change the color of that border if you want to have something cool and different. Uh, but we're, we're going to leave it at black because it looks great here. 
You can decide to not apply that border to your health and meta bar right here, uh, and also to the weakened bar. Uh, if you don't want that, you can simply remove it. We're going to leave it here for now. And then here we have the icon zoom. The icon zoom pretty much is used to remove the 3D little border that is uh, by default here with all of the weak ores and all of the icons actually for World of Warcraft in general. This is the default look of the icon. By applying a 30% zoom, we get rid of this border and then we can apply the new little two pixel black border that looks really nice and clean. We can also modify the main icon here. Uh, so this is gonna be the main row above the resources. So you can change the width here, there we go. We're gonna leave this at 48, but if you want, you could create like something pretty cool and unique, right? Uh, we're gonna reduce the height instead. We're gonna change this to like 36 right here to create this kind of like squeezed rectangle look. Looks pretty nice. We're gonna reduce the spacing of the icon here to one. This is uh, controlling the spacing around the main bar and also the resources. We're gonna move it down to one. And then we're gonna have the number of icons. So this is gonna be the primary row at the, at the in the middle here. This is gonna change the number of icons that are in this section and everything else is going to adapt and uh, fluidly wrapped around depending on how many you choose to have. So if you wanna have a smaller little weak aura window, you can put it pull it down to five here. There we go, so you're good to go. But we're gonna leave it at eight because you have to keep in mind that the weak ores have been uh, designed to have eight. So most of the classes and most of the spec will try to use as much as those of those eight spot as possible, right? So we're gonna leave it at eight for now, but feel free to do whatever you want with your weak ores. Uh, it's yours, you customize it to your liking here. For the secondary icon, you can change the same pretty much uh, type of setting. So the width, the height, which we're gonna lower a little bit right here, there we go. And then uh, we're going to also adjust the spacing down to one just to be consistent with our main icon over here with the look that we're going for. Same thing with the dynamic icon. So the secondary icon is this bar at the bottom. Dynamic is going to be sitting on top of the core over here. We're going to not change the width, but we're going to change the height down a little bit. There we go. 24. Why not? Spacing reduced to one to be consistent. And the bottom margin is going to be the breathing room with the core. So we're going to leave it at 10. It's always nice to have a little bit of breathing room here. We can also swap the two groups. So you have the effect here, the effects here on the left side and then the ability on the right side. If you want to swap these, simply check this. Pretty nice. You can also align them from center. So instead of being on the edge here growing inward, you start them from the middle here in the center and then they grow outward. So if you want to have this design, you can also do that. For the side icons, uh, we're not going to need to modify this because the left side and right side group are empty. We didn't put any icons in here uh, by default, so you feel free if you want to move things in here. Uh, if you do, make sure you come here and change uh, their appearance. You can also change the margin. You can feel free to customize this as you want. For the maintenance icons here, uh, this is going to be kind of cool. We're going to have the behavior for all of these, but then you're going to have the styling option at the bottom. Simply adjust it to whatever whatever you feel like you need to have the design that you want, right? The little rectangle square that we have right now. Uh, we're gonna apply this to this group. We're gonna reduce the spacing down to one, and then uh, the margin, we're gonna leave it at 10, but it's pretty much the same thing as the dynamic group here. For the behavior, this is gonna be where things can get interesting. So right now, all of these buff are shown only if missing. But if I wanted to have them show up at all time, I could do it or only show if applied, right? So right now, if I go in combat, because in a rested area, they're all, uh, they're all hidden by default in order to clean things up. But as soon as you leave the rested area or go in combat, you'll see all the buff that you're missing. Priests are very lucky. <laughs> they have a lot of buffs available. But as you see, as I'm applying these buff here, uh, they're all disappearing, right? There we go. So now I'm good to go. I got everything I need. There we go. And they all disappear. But if I wanted to change this behavior to show at all time, let's say that I want to keep track of all of them, well, I could change this behavior. So if I go back in combat here, you'll see that they'll always show. Make sure you do a quick slash reload after changing anything in the panel. There we go. So now we get access to that information at all time down here. We're going to reset it back down to uh, the default setting. There we go. We're going to show if missing, show if missing. This is going to be the default behavior. If you want to change this, feel free to do so. For the resources here, uh, it's going to be quite straightforward. You can change the uh, location of them and the height. 
You can have more customized option here in, in, in the individual sections down here, but for the global styling of the resources, that's where you're going to do it. So right now it is sitting below the primary bar, but I could decide to move it over the primary bar right here. So that could be a possible design choice if I wanted to. I can also change the height of the mana and the health bar here. That's a possibility. There we go. I can also change the height of the uh, height 2, which I don't use right now. I only use height 1 and height 3 for the priest. So height 1 is going to be health and mana. Height 3 is going to be the little cooldown bar at the bottom, the weakened state bar. So that's going to be right here. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, you're gonna be able to modify that if you uh, if you want to. You can also change in the specific groups here which height is being used for what bar. So if you want your health to be different than your mana, you can also do that. The out of combat alpha setting is pretty nice. So if you want, you can lower the opacity of the entire group right here and have it completely disappeared out of combat. You can also decide to ignore this on enemy target or friendly target, which means that if I stand here, click on dummy, it all shows back up. There you go. It goes back to 100% opacity because of the ignore enemy checkbox. You can also remove it if you want, right? There we go. For the health bar here, uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You can choose which height you choose from the resources here. So which height do you want? And you can change the text formatting as well. So full uh, the full text, the formatted text, full value text plus percent, formatted plus percent or just percentage. You can also change uh, right here the color. So there's a slight gradient from dark green to light green for the health bar. And you can also remove the gradient if you want to. If you want to use a flat color, it's going to use the first one. If you want to change the gradient, feel free to do so. Pick any color you want. You can do all of that good stuff here. For the meta bar, we're going to have exactly the same configuration. Height, text format, color gradient, all of that good stuff. And we're going to see the same thing also for the weakened soul bar. So the weakened soul bar is going to have the height and it's going to have a uh, cooldown. Oh, there's a little bit of a mismatching label here. We're going to need to fix this. Uh, but pretty much um, this is going to be for the cooldown area. So if it's not on cooldown uh, or if it's on cooldown here, you're going to be able to see that right there. So you're going to be able to change the color. So by default, as you can see, uh, it is showing up as a light gray. But if I apply here, you see this little bar. Right now, it's a little bit thin because of the border that we added. So we can go in here and resources, resource three, move it all the way up to 10. And there you go. So now it uses the color. It size down and we're good to go. And when it goes away, we're going to be good to go. It's going to be using a fully transparent when it's when it's pretty much available. It, it goes full transparent. So it shows you an empty bar. And as you press the shield, you can see that you currently have the effect. So it's currently technically on cooldown if you want to. You can't reapply the shield, right? So that's going to be how that's going to be uh, set right here. So that's going to be uh, that's pretty much going to be it for all this styling here. So if you want to change uh, anything here, feel free to do so. But the really, really cool thing about this is that you can share it. So you can copy this directly from the general option, for example, and paste it to another class or even share it with one of your friends. So let's say that I want to share it with my other classes. All I have to do is click copy setting custom configuration and then I can go into my other classes and paste it over here. And this way, they're all going to be styled the same, right? So, and also you can share this design with somebody else or load it from an external source online or from your friend. So I'm going to show you how. So if you export right here, the general option there, export, you're going to be given this code, which you can share, or somebody could have shared this code to you. So let's say you get a code shared. You simply paste it here, import, and it's going to give you a second layer here, number two, that you're going to see outside of the group. This is very important. We're going to go ahead and reset to default here. So we bring us uh, it brings us back to the original design right there. Right. And then you're going to be able to right click copy. And as you can see, the option isn't here. That happens sometimes. We're going to do a quick reload. There you go. We're going to open up the menu again. Right click copy settings, configuration options, paste. And voila, you have this design that you just shared or made or wherever the hell you got it from, right? And it's uh, it's it's autom automatically applied. If you don't like it or anything goes wrong, feel free to reset to default, but make sure you always delete this extra layer that you imported. Don't leave it there. Make sure you clean it up so you only have the ores 
that you're interested in having, right? So there you go. You're able to fully change the design and the style of your weak ores pretty easily with very little weak ore knowledge. And uh, hopefully uh, that, that, that I was able to explain how to do so pretty well. One last thing I want to do here is going to show you how to uh, change the font. So if you do some specific design, some minimalistic look, you might want to use a separate font, right? Or a different font. There's going to be three locations uh, of font that you're going to need to change. And the first one is going to be in the middle of the icons. So whenever you use an ability, uh, there's going to be a cooldown that shows in the middle here. This cooldown here is actually going to be the same cooldown as the ability in here. So it's going to be the same one as your bar, right? So if I click this thing, for example, and remove it, you'll see that the cooldown in the middle is the same one as in the bar right here, down here. So because of this, you can actually see this interaction here. If I go here and sh remove this, it's going to remove the same number. Because of this, that means it's not modified within the weak aura, but with World of Warcraft itself. So you need to load an add-on like OmniCC or a more complex one like LVI, like I've talked into the uh, installation process. So by loading either one of these tools, or there's probably more out there that will modify the cooldown number, you'll be able to change the look and behavior and the font and all of that good stuff, even the color, I think, for these. So you'll be able to fully customize that. The other number that you're going to want to modify is showing up at the top of certain ability, right? So something like Prayer of Mending is going to have multiple stacks. So because of that, there's a little one that shows up at the top here. If we want to see how many abilities have this little number, we can click the group here, any of the group, go to display, scroll down, and look at the text here. And it's going to tell us that we have one for Prayer of Mending and for Power of Shield. So by modifying the font here, it will allow us to modify it. So you can go also in each and every one of them, modify the font, change the size, the color, all of that good stuff, and you'll change the little one number here at the top, right? The other number that you're going to need to change outside of this, also make sure that you go look in every other settings because, for example, the effects usually have some. So Shadow Weaving, Serendipity, and Focus Will will also have a, uh, a, little, a little number on top. The last place you're going to need to change the number value is going to be on the health bar and the mana bar here. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. You simply click on either one of them, go to display, and then go into uh, the bottom of the display tab, and you're going to be able to change the font, the size, and the color. Same thing for Matabar, font, size, color. You'll be able to fully customize this and have exactly the design that you want for your weak auras. All right, well, that's it for this video. I cannot believe you made it all the way to the end. If you would like to support in any way, shape, or form, make sure to like this video. I know everybody says this, but it's true. Like the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to on YouTube, and come see me on Twitch. I stream every single day on Twitch. I play World of Warcraft. I play variety games. We make weak wars. We have a good time. Join us. Come throw me a follow. Just say hi. I'll be really happy. But in the meantime, I'll see you all in World of Warcraft.